Today's video is sponsored by Pickers Grip. Stop dropped picks and pick rotation while playing with Pickers Grip. Made with all natural ingredients in Virginia. Check out their website to order. When you support my sponsor, this also supports my channel and it's very much appreciated. You ever wonder how much deeper the ocean would be if sponges didn't grow in it? I, I do. Welcome to you. Thank you for joining me here in my home studio today. My name is Robert, and I have had a request for this video from a few different people, and it got me to thinking there has been a recent boom over the last 10, 15 years or so uh, of low wattage, uh, low wattage amplifier heads, particularly uh, tube heads. Now, not all of the heads on this list are are full tube anyway, uh, but the majority of them are. You know, and since their inception, the popu their popularity has grown and grown to the point that there is now really an entirely uh, different, you know, a whole nother category here in our industry. So without further ado, this is the top 13 greatest low wattage guitar amplifier heads ever. Let's get to it. Number one, Randall RM22. RM22 HDX to be specific, which was the full model name. I actually have one of these bad boys sitting right here behind me, and uh, I like this amp very, very much. This was part of the uh, Randall MTS module series amplifiers, in which you could, in which you could basically create just about any amplifier that you wanted out of them. The RM22, as the model number suggests, is the 20 is the 22 watt version, allowed for two different modules, and you can swap them out whenever you feel like it. Just like this one. This particular module here happens to be the, uh, the what they call the tread plate, which was their dual rectifier, uh, you know, dual rectifier model. Yeah. They are all tube. Uh, the pre the preamp tubes, of course, being present in each module, and then the power amp tubes being in the amplifier head itself. I've got three different modules that I've used on mine, and I've used my uh, used my RM22 fairly sporadically uh, on my channel, you know, since I've first acquired it two or three years ago. Uh, a brainchild from the genius of none other than Bruce Egnator. Uh, they're no longer being made. However, uh, Bruce Egnator continues to champion the arena of the module amplifiers, uh, of which he is al has also currently been involved in the designs of the uh, the current Synergy amplifier line. Uh, the Synergy amps, by the way, I believe are also compatible with the old Randall MTS modules. So if you got a bunch of old Randall MTS modules sitting around, don't sell them. Go buy yourself a Synergy amp or find yourself a Randall MTS amplifier on the used market because they're awesome. Number two, Hughes and Kettner Grandmeisters. Uh, there is two different generations of these now. The first generation being the 36 and uh, the later current generation is now known as the Grandmeister 40. Uh, these were the the big, you know, the big brother amplifier to the popular TubeMeister amp series. The Tube Meisters to me always sounded okay, not the best sounding amps I've ever heard, but you know, definitely serviceable amplifiers. I wouldn't complain if somebody gave me one kind of thing. Uh, but the Grand Meisters on the other hand sound nothing short of awesome. You know, they come with built-in effects on board and, you know, and not overloaded with effects. You know, they, they, the effects that they come with are things like delay and chorus and reverb, you know, stuff that most people are going to use and they just sound killer. I've wanted a Grandmeister since they first came out. Unfortunately, I've just never gotten around to buying one myself. Maybe one day. Number three, PRS MT15, Mark Tremonti signature head. This is a newer lunchbox size head on the, the uh, market here that just came out in the last year or two, I believe. Uh, this, as the name implies, is the Mark Tremonti signature head from PRS. This is kind of, a, a, I believe, was inspired uh, somewhere between Mark's old uh, Mesa dual rectifiers and uh, his PRS Archon that uh, he was using in later years. This head is unique because it's, you know, while it's only 15 watts, it was the first low wattage head, at least that I can recall, uh, that actually used 6L6 power tubes in it. Most low wattage heads like that are going to use 6, 6V6s or EL84s. You know, but this one uses a pair of the great big full size 6L6 power tubes. 
These amps have sold really, really well for PRS because they're very fairly priced. They're only around 650 bucks, I believe. Uh, the used, you know, you can start to see them popping up on the used market now, but they're not selling for much less than the new ones go for. To be honest, uh, you know, if you are a metal player, especially if you're into modern metal tones, this is the amp for you. And it's another one that's been on my wish list forever. Number four, Marshall Studio Series amps. I don't know if they've actually named these amps the Studio Series, but uh, that's what I'm going to call them for lack of uh, anything else better to call them. Uh, this is the new version of the the 15 watt version of the uh, the JCM 800 that just came out uh, about a year ago, along with the I think it was a 15 or 20 watt version of the Plexi. Uh, the Super Lead, and the one that's been out for a few years already is the 15-watt version of the Jubilee. All of these amps, tone-wise, are very, very faithful uh, recreations, uh, smaller versions of their big, larger 100-watt brethren. Uh, and not only that, but they are also all made in the UK. These are not imports. These are not made in China or Vietnam or any of those other places that uh, you know the UK companies like to import the construction of their amplifiers. These are still made in the made in the UK. You know, and to be fair, for amps made in the UK, these are really aren't that you know really aren't all that expensive. You can buy them brand new for around the fifteen hundred dollar range, twelve to fifteen, depending on the model. Like I said, they sound killer. I need a JCM eight hundred for this room that I'm in right here like badly number five the orange tiny terror uh as uh, you all may be aware i am a, a big fan of uh ryan fluff bruce and i follow his channel pretty closely and he did a video on this topic here about a year or so ago uh similar topic anyway and he mentioned that in that video that the orange tiny terror is the lunchbox amp that started the lunchbox craze and quite frankly i agree with him uh, the, the earliest tiny tears, I believe, were still being made in Korea. They're either made in China now, but uh, the earliest tiny tears were Korean made, and uh, and they were awesome sounding, all tube, fifteen watt, you know, three knob serviceable amplifiers. And they filled a need for a lot of guitar players out there that uh, you know that needed to be able to perform but couldn't, you know, crank their amps up because you know they were fifty watts or hundred watts, and in places it just they didn't need that kind of volume. Within Orange's own line, the Tiny Terror has spawned a number of other uh, smaller lunchbox amps, such as the Dual Terrors and the uh, the Micro Terrors and the Micro Dark. And also, let's not forget that it spawned number six, the Orange Dark Terror. That's right. This is the high gain heavy metal version of the Tiny Terror amplifier. Uh, very, very similar in design and call price wise. I think it's only about fifty bucks more than the Tiny Terror. And uh, if you are if you're a metal player and you're a fan of orange amplifiers and uh, you don't need one of the great big ones, this is the amp for you. It, there is also a uh, a a larger thirty watt version I think called the Dual Dark. I think is what it's called. If you like the high gain tones that you get from orange amplifiers, this is a really, really good way to get one in a very, very small, compact, affordable package. Number seven, Mesa Boogie Mini Rectifier. You guessed it, this is a small lunchbox size 25 watt version of the famous Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. And that's what it sounds like. <laughs> the first time I heard one, I heard one through a rectifier 212 cabinet, and it sounded just like a dual rectifier. Uh, sounded really, really awesome, to be honest. This amp is cool enough that you might be surprised at some of the other amp companies out there that have taken this exact same circuit board, tweaked it a little bit by changing out a component or two here and there, sticking a new label on it, and calling it their own. Matter of fact, there's one sitting about eight feet away from me right now called the Panama Shaman 20. The Panama Shaman 20, the Joyo Mjolnir, and uh, you know, there's two or three others out there that are this very circuit board made overseas. So the argument can be made that the Mini Rectifier has had a much bigger impact on our industry than a lot of people realize. Number eight, PV6505MH. You know, of course, the PV6505 slash 5150, whichever generation you want to talk about, uh, you know, has gone on to become one of the most legendary rock amps ever. And uh, despite the fact that I don't think it's the heaviest sounding amp in the world, there's a ton of metal players out there, too, that love them. So 
it behooved PV to come out with a smaller version of it for those people that don't need 120 watts and only need about 20 watts, uh, which is about what this thing puts out, I believe. Uh, Tone-wise, it's pretty faithful to uh, you know to uh, its its older brother 6505 plus. Uh, to me, I mean, they sound almost identical in my opinion. I've debated about whether or not I should get one of these myself. Uh, but I keep talking myself out of it because at the end of the day, I do have a 6505 plus combo uh, that I do really, really like. You know, what, regardless of what genre of music you think this amp is best suited for, they st they sound awesome any way, any way you put it. Number nine, the EVH 5150 LBX and LBX2. Uh, of course, again, as the name suggests, these are the the lunchbox size amplifiers of the now famous EVH 5150 amplifiers. The LBX1, I believe, is the uh, channels 1 and 2 off of the full-size 100-watt uh, 5150 amp, and uh, the LBX2, I believe, is channels 2 and 3. So, you know, you kind of have your pick of how much gain that you want. You know, none of them are the cleanest sounding amps in the world, as you know, there's really not an Eddie Van Halen amplifier out there that does clean tones really, really well. But, you know, if you're looking for rock and metal tones... You could do a lot worse, especially if you need something with a lower wattage package. Uh, also, very affordable out there. These you know go for the you know six seven hundred dollar range. Uh, not very expensive at all. You know, I really really like the EVH amplifiers. Took me a while to come around because the first one I heard in my life actually sounded horrible, but uh, every other one that I've heard since then have all sounded awesome. Number ten. Marshall DSL-20HR. There's been three generations of the Marshall DSL series. There was the original JCM-2000 series that uh, are now suddenly becoming a little harder to find because those are the ones that were made in the UK back in the early, early you know, pretty much throughout the 2000s. Then they came out with the uh, the second DSL series a couple years later, which were uh, unfortunately imports but sounded, you know, pretty you know you know they still sounded okay and then we have the current iteration of the dsl series which are still imports but sound absolutely phenomenal now i recognize that marshall's name alone will sell amplifiers but that said if you followed my channel for a while you know that i'm a marshall guy i.e my 900 that i my beloved 900 that i have sitting right here behind me i love marshall amps and the current dsl series uh amplifiers are you know absolutely live up to the hype that's why there are so many people that are you know selling their amps that they've been playing for years and switch it over to the dsls because they sound great they're affordable they're reliable and uh you know they are versatile you know if you play uh, you know if you play a lot of uh, you know a lot of smaller gigs and i don't care what genre of music to be honest with you uh but if you play a lot of smaller gigs where you might not be able to turn up that loud the marshall dsl 20 is a fantastic option Number 11, Randall RD20H Diablo Series, which you might be able to see one right here behind me. Again, if you followed my channel for a while, you know that I have demoed a lot of pedals in my almost five years of being on YouTube. And the majority of those pedal demos have all been done with my Randall Diablo head. And there's a reason for it. They were designed by the legendary Mike Fortin, and Mike Fortin put his genius into these affordable uh line of all tube amplifiers every bit as much as he does with his really really expensive amps and if you ever go shop for any of the actual fortin uh amplifiers there's several of those things that are up around the six thousand dollar mark they, they ain't cheap but they have a fantastic almost fender like clean channel uh, I mean, I'm still blown away at how clean that how clean the fir the clean channel is on this amplifier, uh, which is one of the main reasons why I bought it. Uh, it also does the low you know the low to mid gain and the and the high gain stuff really really well. So if you're a metal player but you use a lot of pedals, Randall Diablo amps might be the amp for you, especially if you're on a budget. The RD20 I believe sells for about five or six hundred dollars. Uh, I'll post the price there on the screen just uh, uh, for verification because I don't have it in front of me here at the moment. Uh, but they're, you know, again, very, very affordable. They're reliable, and they just sound great. Number 12, DV Mark Micro Series. I decided to include this entire series uh, on this list because it's hard to just pick out one. 
if you're not familiar with DV Mark, DV Mark are the guitar amp division of Mark Bass amplifiers. Uh, of course, Mark Bass being a uh, you know, very popular brand of bass amplifiers, all made in Italy. Uh, DV Mark amps are also made over there. And uh, these are really teeny tiny, uh, I think these are mostly solid state amplifier heads that uh, are designed to be uh, high wattage, high headroom, uh, offer lots of clarity and tonal versatility, and also be small enough and compact enough that you can fit them in the pocket of a gig bag. They're also really, really affordable. Most of them sell between, uh, you know, three and four hundred dollars. And, uh, you know, and again, you know, we're not talking about small little heads with two or three knobs on them. You know, there's two full banks of, you know, two channel amps uh, that we're talking about here. Uh, the legendary guitar aficionado Greg Howe actually has a signature amplifier in this series. You know, and again, it's really, really hard for me to pick just one model, you know, and there's five or six of them that they make in this series. Uh, but it's really hard to pick just one because, you know, quite frankly, I think they all sound great. Number 13, Quilter Labs Overdrive 202. This is uh, another one that was real hard for me to pick just one out of because, you know, Quilter Labs are known for making, again, you know, probably some of the best solid state amps on the market today. Uh, but they're also known for making them really, really small and really compact, compact very, very similar to the DV Mark micro amps that I just talked about. Uh, I decided to include the Overdrive 202 amp on this list because, uh, you know, I think, you know, from a versatility standpoint, I mean, it's a little bit more my style. You know, great sounding amps, great sounding pedal platforms. You know, some of them you can even mount right there onto your pedal board. Quilter Labs have fast earned a reputation for being amongst some of the greatest solid state amps on the market today. So there you have it. There is my list of 13 of the greatest small lunchbox size, uh, low wattage heads. I guess they're not all low wattage, but still that's what I'm gonna call it. That are out there for you to check out here today. I will post links to all of the amps talked about in this video down in the description. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.